let's start with SFRA now. Okay, so um, SFRA, as as I told you, that it provides uh, plug and play integrations and uh, is a particular architecture provided by Salesforce. So basically, it was provided as a, a base uh, on to on top of which you can develop your uh, website further, just like uh, PWA. Uh, they have taken the same similar approach with the PWA that they have provided a base React application and on top of it, you can develop further your uh, uh, develop your application further. So. Um, I've already uh, like uh, explained what a, P- a progressive web app is. So let's talk about how um, the PWA kit provided by Salesforce is taking the uh, advantage of the headless commerce. So both of these um, approaches of developing your storefront, uh, whether it is a PWA kit or SFRA. Have Can you please p- give us a, give us an example and make us understand this? Like, let's take the same example of the laptop vendor. I'm I'm selling laptops to let's say individual customers. Now in this case, how an SFRA architecture is going to be different than a PWA PWA kit or whatever that you want to use on it. Okay, so for example, if you are se- uh, selling laptops uh, online, right. okay, and uh, if uh, the PWA is uh, PWA kit is implemented, basically um, in that particular uh, scenario, the business is running. Uh, we are basically decoupling the front end and the back end of the application that they have built. So that's the headless approach. We uh, the front is uh, front end is uh, running uh, separately, and the back end is uh, running separately. So, for example, in the PWA kit, they have taken the approach that the React app uh, is uh, is running on the managed oh. runtime provided by Salesforce, which is used for deploying and man- uh, monitoring the PWA kit f- uh, front end. And the back end is basically our business manager, uh, the admin panel uh, that we are talking about. Uh, so in terms of um, if we are talking about the business that is selling laptops, um, they would uh, basically be able to sell uh, sell their products uh, and basically have different tech stacks uh, oh. set up. Uh, basically, uh, they will be managing the front end on a separate tech stack. They are there. All right. I, I think I got it. Beat. So uh, with the help of SFRA architecture, whether it be the database, whether it be the code, whether it be the storefront, whether it be the e-commerce website or anything, everything needs to be uh, developed and uh, developed onto the commerce cloud platform yep. itself, uh, keeping in consideration the SFRA architecture. Yep. But when it comes to headless commerce, there is something called as PWA kit, which uh, which runs on a runtime. Uh, I mean, uh, the managed uh, runtime. The managed runtime and uh, with the help of headless commerce, you can create your E- uh, e-commerce website or the different different storefronts in different tech stacks all together yep. and can still use your Salesforce Commerce Cloud as a back uh, as a backend. Yeah. Is that basically, what it is? Yeah, basically we are using a centralized backend and uh-huh. uh, for example, my mobile application is running and uh, my uh, website oh, is uh, is a uh, progressive uh, web application is running on uh, and they're already connected with the centralized backend. So uh, that, that basically means if you, if, if anyone who is already running a business out there, and is already uh, is already having an e-commerce website developed and is already up and running and working and is trying to and is actually making some business for them out there what needs to be done in this case is uh, they can just like change their backend from the existing one to commerce cloud with the help of this headless commerce uh, api or headless commerce whatever you have just said with the help of pwa kit and uh, they can use that same a uh, website as yes. a storefront and the backend can still be changed and uh, ca- can be changed to commerce cloud. Yeah. So for example, the laptop selling business, they already, right. uh, consider uh, considering they already have their website up and running uh-huh. and they want to shift to commerce cloud as their platform, uh-huh. but uh, they don't want to invest a lot in uh, the UI development. Re- so basically we would have, if we shift to SFRA, we would have to develop everything according to mm-hmm. SFRA again, as we, uh, as you mentioned earlier. And, uh, yeah, if they won't, do not want to invest in that, uh, they could use the existing UI. Just their backend, uh, rather than uh, sending the data to their current database, would be sending the data and getting the data from the uh, business manager of Commerce Cloud using the headless APIs. All right, so the backend is going to be changed, but you can still use the yeah. existing, uh, I mean, existing e- uh, website or storefront or whatever you have created, uh, in so that your users doesn't get to know that there is some change yeah. that has happened onto the website, but the change has ha- actually happened in the backend, yeah. so that the business can actually manage the business in a better way with the help of the capabilities of the Commerce Cloud. Yeah. Or all right, I got it. And you're talking about, you're again and again talking about the APIs. What exactly is this? So basically, um, 
coming on again to the PWA kit. Uh, PWA kit utilizes uh, the headless approach, as we know, uh, which is a it's a base React app provided by Salesforce. It uh, utilizes the two headless APIs, uh, the Salesforce Commerce API, which is the new addition to the SCAPI, the SCAPI, yeah. And uh, we've already have uh, uh, had the Open Commerce API, the OCAPI, right? So it's uh, it's already been there for a while. Uh, the SCAPI provides a bit more. Uh, new features uh, that I can explain uh, uh, later. The PWA kit uh, utilizes the SCAPI and but it still has some dependencies on the uh, open commerce API. And uh, basically it's separating out the front end and the back end as we discussed and running on the managed runtime. So managed runtime is basically uh, the front end that we have separated out. Salesforce is also providing a way to um, like monitor and deploy it on a server so that people don't have to like uh, host it somewhere else or something like that. Oh. So Salesforce is also providing that. So basically, uh, if we talk about what uh, are the differences between SCAPI and OCAPI, why did Salesforce introduce SCAPI? Uh, basically, um, if we talk about, let's have an example. So if we are having a certain customer and they are running uh, uh, the headless uh, approach on their website, so if we use OCAPI, uh, we, we would have to like uh, go through a, a tedious process of generating token uh, and uh, there were a lot of difficulties using uh, in the scenario of shopper login. So basically, uh, if we are using the headless approach, we are actually placing an order on behalf of a customer. Uh, we are using the APIs to do that and uh, like uh, to manage the session and to uh, place an order uh, or authenticate, on behalf, of the, uh, authenticate on behalf of a certain customer was tedious in open commerce API. And that has been uh, resolved in the uh, Salesforce commerce API, the SCAPI. And also uh, it provides a bit faster uh, speeds uh, in terms of uh, like uh, uh, using different caching approaches. So, so it's still not uh, a replacement for OCAPI? Yeah. Or is it a replacement for it? It's uh, definitely not a replacement for OCAPI. Salesforce has also said that uh, OCAPI will be there. And uh, since PWA kit still has some dependencies on uh, OCAPI, um, so it will be there. It has and by the way, when uh, whenever we say SCAPI, that means Salesforce Commerce API. Whenever we say OCAPI, that means Open Commerce API. And API basically means, uh, I mean, you know API what it is. Uh, these are RESTful APIs uh, which uh, which are provided by this headless commerce in order to integrate uh, different different storefronts or different different uh, applications that you have created onto different different tech stacks with the Salesforce Commerce Cloud, which is acting as a backend. But when Salesforce Commerce Cloud is acting as a backend in here and you have got different different storefronts in here, now the challenge comes up is for all of these different different uh, for all of these different different uh, storefronts that we have created, there needs to be someone or something who needs to manage all of the interactions between the backend and the tech stack that we are using in here. And this is the kind of this is the functionality which is being delivered, uh, which which is being delivered by the PWA kit, which is installed onto the runtime server or runtime yeah, run, uh, which is installed onto the runtime provided by Salesforce itself. So you do not have to have another server where you need to host this PWA kit in order to manage all of these transactions. It comes as a package uh, from the Salesforce Commerce Cloud itself. And uh, the backend over here uh, and the storefront is basically interacting with each other with the help of this PWA kit installed in between in the runtime provided by Salesforce. And the interactions which happens between uh, the these storefronts or these applications uh, with the backend and with the PWA kit happens with the help of RESTful APIs. And this is exactly what SCAPI and OCAPI is. Is that what it is? Yeah. All right.